Well, um, we uh, we don't want anyone like like ourselves to be getting in trouble for something that we don't we don't see as a as a problem. We don't see you know, marijuana users aren't going out and killing people for the weed. Um, we're it's, it's just something that I don't know. Well, it seems like those two dunderheads in that video put up a much more compelling argument against using marijuana than what I've been doing. So, this, um, this little skinny punk from Cambridge, Massachusetts, Mike Can, he writes on his website... How low can you go? How about picking on a medical marijuana user for back pain who just so happens, just so happens to be smoking pot? Demented Rance, do you think he'll apologize? Phil Damien Demento, class act. He also writes in, uh, Shelly Martinez responds to Demented Rant smears. So he says, I'm smearing her. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Why don't you email Shelly Martinez and have her disclosed the name of the doctor that prescribed, that gave her a prescription to purchase medical marijuana. Because all you potheads, all, it seems like your first line of argument is that, well, marijuana is a medicine, and you know, it shouldn't be illegal. So let her disclose the doctor's name. I, I sincerely doubt there is one. You see, because what happens is that you potheads, all of a sudden, now, now you know how to diagnose problems, now you know how to cure them, and now you're going to prescribe yourself what you call medicine. That's, that seems very responsible. Oh, no, but what would you expect from a bunch of stupid friggin' potheads? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, Mike Can, you little coward, skinny, stupid bitch. Let me tell you something. See, back in the day when I had a construction business and I hired a good friend of mine who was a pot smoker, and he often, he often would, would say the same BS that you say, that nobody could overdose for marijuana, it, it, you can't get, it doesn't cause any harm, it, and, and all the benefits, oh, you know, it's medicinal, people use it for medicine. Well, you know, I'd be on a job site at, at a customer's home, and he'd be in the backyard smoking pot, and then the, the homeowner would see this. So, and then I, I had to get the grief. Why? Because he convinced himself that marijuana wasn't harmful. Meanwhile, he was stoned out of his mind. He couldn't function. He, got, he couldn't work. He'd become lazy, and he'd become intellectually dull, much the same way that you acted in that video. So, so marijuana's not addictive. You know, this, this friggin', this stupid skinny ass little punk Mike Can's gonna do this big interview. This big interview that's gonna be shown in the UK. And I, it seems that Mike Can, because marijuana's not addictive, he couldn't control himself and he had to smoke pot before he went and did the interview and he comes across like a friggin' moron. Again, Mike Can, you're, you're a far more compelling argument against smoking marijuana than I've been doing. I thank you. <laughs> You see, you folks are delusional. You're delusional, and you're stupid, and your brains are becoming dull. Again, Mike Can, you want to say I'll apologize? I will apologize. As soon as, she as soon as she says, you know, who the doctor is and who prescribed this medicine to her, then I'll apologize. The Guardian. I'm joined by Andy and D-Rock, who play with the New Age rock and roll band in Boston, Prospect Hill. And both of them, in fact, the entire band campaigned last November for the decriminalization of marijuana. So, Andy, tell, tell me why you and the rest of the band thought this was important to get out there and uh, campaign about. Well, um, we, uh, we don't want anyone like, like ourselves to be getting in trouble for something that we don't we don't see him as a as a problem. We don't see, you know, I mean, marijuana users aren't going out and killing people over over weed. Um, weird. It's it's just something that I don't know. I just don't. I don't really know what to say about it, to be honest. With you. When you say you don't want others to get in trouble like you have, you've you you yourself have been arrested twice, but not in Boston or Massachusetts, in the neighboring state of New Hampshire. What happened to you? Uh, I was arrested the first time when I was 17 years old with. Uh, with a, a glass pipe and a little crumb of, of weed, and uh, I, I went through a diversion program, did the whole court thing, paid my $2,000 fine, 
And the second time I was actually arrested as a passenger in a car. I wasn't driving. I wasn't doing anything. I was just in a car. And I was searched. And they found a, a small bag of marijuana, which had less than a gram of weed. And I was also arrested for that. Now I'm actually going through the court and the fees and the fines and the lawyers and the district attorney right now as we speak. And D-Rock, what's the impact of that kind of thing to people when they get uh, uh, a criminal record? Now, of course, you can't in Massachusetts, but in the past you could. What, what, what would happen to people if that happened to them? It would affect jobs. Uh, it would just affect your life in general. I personally feel like we need to take the next step even further than decriminalization as to legalizing it because I feel like we're in a depression right now and the marijuana industry would get us out of that. Tell me more. How would that, uh, what's the thinking? How would that work? It would offer jobs. It would, it would be a whole new industry. It would further, I feel like it would surpass the automobile industry by far because like, everyone, you know, inst- it'll, people, I wouldn't smoke cigarettes anymore if I could go to the store and get a pack of weed. Like, you know, a pack of, like, of joints. Greens. Yeah. I just feel like it would just offer jobs. It would just, it's a whole new industry. And Taxing. Taxing. But and it would make, I think there's a fact of like $15 billion a year in taxes and about $100 billion in the next seven years if marijuana was legal. It would, it would get us out of this depression. And, that and, and Andy, what would you say to, to those like the district attorney who I spoke to? Who say, who say that marijuana use is dangerous and uh, to decriminalize it, let alone legalize it, is to encourage its use, and that's bad for particularly young people. All right, so who, who's going and smoking a joint and robbing a store? I know crackheads that'll go rob a store because they, they need it fixed. No one's really addicted to weed. No one needs weed that bad that they're going to go rob someone for money or for possessions to get weed. I don't know anyone like that. I've never met anybody like that, and I don't think I ever will because it's just not how it is. So, Scott, tell me about the vote in last November in Massachusetts and the proposition to decriminalize marijuana. How did it go? Uh, Question two, which was the uh, proposition to decriminalize uh, marijuana in Massachusetts to a $100 fine, passed with a 65% majority of the voting public. 65%, that's a, that's a pretty resounding victory. Yeah, that, uh, in any political arena, 65% is an absolute landslide. Um, you, you look at politicians that win with a 50-55% majority, and they consider that a huge victory, a huge landslide. So to get 65% of the vote, um, it's huge. And what did it mean for someone like you, uh, a dope smoker in this state? Well, it means, uh, for me anyway, I know it's going to, it makes me less nervous. I know I'm not going to get arrested if I'm possessing marijuana. You know, I'm not hurting anybody if I have a bag of marijuana in my pocket. And if a police officer were to stop me and search me for whatever reason, if they found that marijuana, I'm not going to get arrested. I'm not going to spend a night in jail. I'm not going to have to go to court the next morning. I'm going to get a a $100 citation. Uh, which is a civil offense, and it's basically the equivalent of a parking ticket. So, Mike, you were very involved in last November's vote. It was a case of people versus the politicians? Uh, Yes, it was. We had uh, Governor DeVal Patrick, Senator Kerry, and every other basically major elected official against us that didn't want uh, the people to vote for decrim. And they, they basically repeated the same lines that they always have, And I think the big thing that happened is that people's life experience showed them that the law was wrong and that the penalty was unjust. Now, you're a medical marijuana user. Uh, Tell me why that is. You you had a sporting injury. Yes, I was a uh, competitive wrestler, uh, USA Wrestling. I basically have a herniated disc, and I often have nerve pain in my back. So I use medical marijuana. You know, I could also use... Tylenol or Oxycontin, which have been prescribed, but uh, I find that marijuana actually helps much more, and specifically, I'm not worried about having it kill my liver in 20 years like my father, who had the same bad back, same nerve condition, took Tylenol for 20 years, and now he needs a, you know, he just basically got a liver transplant in the last year, so I find cannabis to be safer and a great medicine for the pain that I have. For more great downloads, go to guardian.co.uk forward slash audio.